ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين I don't really remember the, the actual title of, of my talk but it is related to that sometimes we get caught in life in cycles we get caught either in a cycle that's beneficial or a cycle in life that's not beneficial and the religion of Islam teaches us to always strive to be in the beneficial cycle the cycle that is the cycle of good you do good the doors of khair the doors of good open if you do evil then the possibility that another door of evil opens for us to continue doing evil but i have to that may allah protect us Amen. the door of good is open if we use the door of good then inshallah it will lead to more good but if we end up with evil thoughts and then evil action and evil speech it could be that the door of evil keeps opening and before we know it we've gone through so many doors of evil that we do not know how to come back we are lost in the cycle of evil and this is a disaster because the cycle of evil or the road of evil leads in one destination i think most of you know what the destination is evil leads to evil leads to evil and then next thing you know you are amongst the company of the evil evil one in the evil place and the evil place is jahannam but i don't do that but the door of good leads to another door of good another door of good and inshallah on the day of judgment you will walk you will be walking through the door of good into jannah may allah make us of those people people don't understand unfortunately today that you want to you have to have the thought and you have to have the intention meaning and you have to have the speech and then that leads to the action that leads to success because lead good leads to success and evil leads to failure this is a rule we cannot get away from this and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in, in some terms in the quran i want to go over some ayat with you um, please understand if i may just please forgive me it's sometimes it's very important to mention these things because the truth of the matter is that we become so used to being entertained that when we come to the masjid uh, to less, listen to a lecture or to a short talk it, it's almost like we come in with the understanding that we need to be entertained and then if we are not entertained uh, we are lost in other words it's, it's, it, it's not a pleasure anymore this is not meant to be about feeling good please understand our religion if you feel a good good about doing the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approves of if you feel good about it inside then this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the requirement does not mean that there is no requirement that says you have to feel good about something you just have to do it we have to force ourselves it is not about I'll do it when I feel good because this is the mentality of the non-Muslims they only do something when it feels good you've heard the expression oh it's no fun no it's not fun because in sacrifice 
in uh, disciplining ourselves, in striving to do good, which may not feel good. Did you hear what I just said? In striving to do good, we may not feel good. It's not about feeling good. It's about doing the right thing. And many times the right thing does not feel good because you have to strive hard for it. And achieving Jannah, achieving success in the hereafter, is not a bed of roses, as they say uh, in the American English language. It's not a bed of roses. Anyone who told you it's a bed of roses, then somebody's lied to you. Because the Prophet explained to us that the road to Jannah is full of articles and things on the floor that can tear our skin, that can hurt us. Things on the road to Jannah is, is, is very painful. And if you expect that the road to Jannah is an easy one, except for whom Allah makes it easy, by the way. We're going to get into that as well. Instead, the road, the evil road, to Jahannam, by the way, it's a very smooth path. Evil leads to evil, leads to evil, until you don't know anymore what it is, and you're just opening one door to the next door, and it becomes very easy. It becomes very easy to do evil. We become used to it. In these ayat that I'm about to present to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الْآخِرَةِ نَزِلُ لَهُ فِي حَرْثِهِ It means the following. Whoever is trying to acquire the harvest, the accumulation of the akhirah, in other words, we are concentrating our life in doing good so that we are successful in the akhirah, in the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of those people, Jazakumullah khair, please ask the little children to barakallahu fi Jazakumullah khair. Thank you, brother. Nazid lahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this, in this uh, ayah, said Nazid lahu. We increase him in the ability to do more good, to have a bigger harvest. In other words, you enter the door of good and you step into a next door of good and door of good and inshallah you will be in this path of good. Even we can call it a cycle of good. But again, the other side of the coin. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَفْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِيهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيبِ Whoever is concentrating his whole purpose in life he or she, because this applies to both males and females, that if we go on just our whole effort in life, our thoughts, our speech, our actions are concentrated only on the pleasure of this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I will give it to you. But remember one thing, on the day of judgment, that you have nothing with me, because your whole concentration, your whole thinking, your whole body, your action, your speech, is that of a person who is strictly concerned with his dunya. No thought of the akhirah whatsoever. <clears throat> no thought of the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the door of evil. If we engage in that, we are on the path of evil. We're not on the path of good. So I'm hoping that inshallah we will all take this opportunity to be reminded because subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَفْعَوْ مُؤْمِنِينَ And remind because the reminder is beneficial for the believer. This is not necessarily going to be a, a pleasant thing to hear. Actually, it may even, even be hard because most of us, we want to live in denial. That's part of being involved in the world. When we are involved in the world to the point where we forget the akhirah, we move into the state of denial. We're always thinking nothing is going to happen to me. I'm never going to get sick. I am not going to die. And when I die, inshallah, I will have plenty of time to make tawbah. 
I will have time, plenty of time to make istighfar. I will go to Hajj and Allah will erase all my sins. What do you have a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're going to achieve this? Anyone does, please let me know because I want this contract too. If anybody has a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you sign, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry about anything, I will give you time to make tawbah. Don't worry. Please give me this contract. I want to see it. And not only that, but I also want to sign it. Inshallah, you can make a copy for me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الْآخِرَةِ نَزِدْ لَهُ فِي حَرْثِهِ Whoever was, is concentrating, his path is towards an akhirah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَزِدْ لَهُ We give him in abundance of things that will give him success in the akhirah. The people who are not Muslims, they, they say, to talk about death is morbid. We don't want to talk about this thing called death. No, the Muslim needs to talk about death. We need to address this issue because it's going to happen to us. We have no way around it. كل نفس دائقة الموت. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says every soul, nafs, nafs means. By the way, for those of you who, yeah, you maybe have a difference in understanding about what the nafs is versus the ruh. The ruh is the soul. Huh? The ruh is the soul. It's an abstract thing. The nafs is the combination of the soul and the body together. This is the nafs. And we have to understand it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the nafs in the Quran, He is referring to the identity of that person, that conscious, physical, and uh, spiritual aspect of that person. The soul, which is an abstract thing, and then the body included. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every nafs, every nafs, meaning the, the ruh, the soul, and the body shall taste death. There's no one who can avoid this. And this world is a test. It is a test. It is not a necessarily a place of fun. Most of us, they, we just want to have fun. If something is not fun, then I don't want to do it. It has to feel good. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةِ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ يُرِيدُ Allah again is telling you about that, the path of evil. He's explaining it. Whoever wants an ajila, an ajila, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks here about a word, or talks about something called an ajila. It means, if we translate it into modern terms, in terms of how we live today, it means instant gratification, to feel something we want now. It's like instant gratification. If I don't get some pleasure from it now, I don't want it. So I want it now, an ajila, something that I want immediately. And the life of this world is like that. It's an ajila, I want it now. I want more money now. I want a better house now. I want a better car now. And we're not thinking about how we are getting these things. Is it coming from halal sources? Is it coming from sources that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approves of? Or is it coming from sources of evil? Which leads again to more evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh, you want the ajilat, you want this worldly pleasure that is instant now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ajjat, ajjat, excuse me. Uh, we will give it to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to him. But he, there is a kind of a, dis, not a disclaimer, but a, uh, you might say something more specific, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also chooses to whom to give it to. Because some people, believe it or not, they want to enjoy the life of them, this world, be on the path of good, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined them, excuse me, on the path of evil, but Allah has destined them for good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are some people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want them to go to hellfire. For whatever reason, Allah, this is in the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give these people something that is going to make them pass through the door of evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined certain things. 
Some people will achieve Jannah, some people will, some people will ask me, then brother, what's the use of all this? You don't know what your destiny is. I don't know what my destiny is. So we go with what we have. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us money, a lot of money, we take this money and we use it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to please my immediate desires that keep me far away from thinking about Allah and the last day. We do not want to be of those people. Unfortunately, many of us Muslims especially, you know, because we have so much abundance, we are losing track. Really, we are losing track. And we need to go back again. Let's get back to the real thing. Like, let's get back to the purpose. Most Muslims, you ask them, what is your purpose? Why have you been created? No, I don't answer you. Why have you been created? Go ahead, brother. Why have you been created? To worship Allah. To worship Allah subhanahu wa Allah says, I have not created mankind and jinn, another creation that we don't know much about. Some people think they know much about it, but they don't. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn and insan, the human being, except to worship me, he said. To worship Allah. So then we ask, okay, if this is our purpose, then are we fulfilling our purpose? Are we fulfilling our purpose? It's like having a job, brothers, sisters, maybe. It's like having a job. You go to your job, you go to the interview, the, the boss gives you a job, he tells you, okay, I'm going to pay you this much, and your duties are number one, number two, number three. Okay? He's paying you based on the fact that you have understood that these are your jobs, these are your duties. Now you come to work and you say, ah, today I don't feel like doing it. You sit down. The boss is looking at you and saying, when's he going to start working? When's he going to do the job? He comes up to you and he says, so, what have you done? Oh, inshallah tomorrow. <laughs> inshallah, by the way, this is inshallah, this is the inshallah of the Muslims of today, not the inshallah of the Muslims of the past. Huh? You say inshallah, that means I probably am not going to do it. That's what it means. Huh? Most of us are familiar with that. I have a story about it. A brother who has his kids, and they saw it, they went into a toy store, and the kid's about your age, about your kid's age. And they see the store, and they see the toys, and they drag the father inside the store. And, uh, uh, Dad, I want this, I want that. So he's saying, Inshallah. And they say, no, no, I want that. They say, Inshallah. And then they said to him, No, 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 Inshallah. Now, now. <laughs> so you see what we're teaching to our children? That inshallah means maybe, maybe not. No, inshallah means that Allah wills it will happen. And if He does not, it will not happen. So, we need to think in, th in these terms. What are we created for? If we understand what our creation is, we understand what our job is, then what's the reason for not being, for not doing the job? After all, you're being paid. We got paid very nicely tonight, mashallah. May Allah bless the brothers who, uh, who got us this beautiful food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing. Where did this come from? Who created the animal to create this? Who created the, the vegetables and whatever ingredients went in there? And who is in charge of everything? Who is in charge of his universe? Us? Everything, everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's paying us. He's making our life nice. And we are not thankful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, Kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum, Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyaahu ta'budun. Allah wa ta'ala. Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyaahu ta'budun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has made Ya yuhal ladheena amanu Kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum Eat from, all oh, you who believe Eat from all the good pure things that I have created for you Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyaahu ta'budun And be thankful to Allah if you are truly worshipping him In other words, worship and being thankful here in the same 
Same thing. How are we being thankful? We are forgetting our meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in involving ourselves in a life of denial regarding our meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we expect to be, be getting good when we are living our lives like this? Impossible. And Allah says it. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to want this. We have to truly want it. Do you want Jannah? We have to ask ourselves, do I really want Jannah or not? Most people are saying, yes, maybe. Inshallah. <laughs> no, Yahi. You have to want it. In a hadith Qudsi, it is reported that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says by the Prophet He says, Ya ibadi, kullukum dalun illa man hadaydu. Fastahduni ahdikum. Fastahduni. Ask me for guidance. Oh, ya ibadi, my servants, my slaves. Allah is saying in this verse, my slaves, ya ibadi, kullukum dalun. All of you are misguided except the one whom I guide. Except the one whom I guide. So seek guidance from me and I will guide you. What does this mean? It means we have to go to Allah and ask Him to guide us. Some people are afraid of that. Did you know that some people are afraid of how to ask Allah for guidance? Why do you think they're afraid? Yes, brother. <coughs> <laughs> it's a possibility, thank you. May Allah bless you, young man. I mean, <coughs> anybody else? Because they want us to enjoy life. Because what? They want to enjoy life. Allah, what, 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 okay. Get more specific, brother, you're confusing me. It's not fun. Huh? It's no fun. <laughs> if you're a guy, then it's no fun, is it? Allah. In other words, they don't want to make the necessary changes in their lives to arrive at that, to make, to make it, to fulfill their purpose. No, and I don't want to be guided. Yeah, you are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day and you're saying, Eidina Sirat al Mustaqim. And then you're saying to yourself, No, no Sirat al Mustaqim, please. No. What we are saying, what we are thinking, and what we are, uh, our speech and so forth is, is different. Our actions are different. This is a disaster for us. We have to pay attention to this. Please, if you don't, if you don't, if you forget everything, everything you ever learned in a message or everything, please don't forget this one, this one, don't forget this one. Everything else, I don't know, but don't forget this one. Because this is essential. You mean you want to go through all this life, this difficulty, and everything, and then in the end you want to lose your akhirah too? Why? No. We don't want to lose our akhirah. This is a test. This life is a test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in several ayat. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يَقُولُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا أَمَنَّا أَنْ يُتْرَقُوا do you think that Allah says in the, in the Quran, He says, do people think that they will be left alone to say, Amanna, we believe, and that you will not be tested? No, you will be tested. Who was tested more than any other type of human being? Huh? The prophets. If there, was any, if there was any people who deserved to sit down and do nothing and enjoy life, it would be them, not us. Correct? They are the ones who chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet they sacrificed and they strived more than any other human being in history, in the history of mankind. They were, you know, in many cases tortured. In many cases their heads were chopped off. Prophets. And the end, fought and battled, injured, torn apart by certain dictators, as we call them today. Huh? Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, 
ويزيد الله الذين اهتدوا هدى. Look at this guy. ويزيد الله الذين اهتدوا هدى. Allah increases in guidance those who seek guidance. What does this tell you? Again, the concept of the door from one good to another. The path of good. You want good? You want the hidayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You have to ask for it. فَاسْتَهْدُونِي أَهْدِكُمْ Allah in this hadith Qudsi, not in this ayah, said فَاسْتَهْدُونِي So call, ask me for guidance, and I will give it to you. Do you want it? You have to ask yourself, do I want to be guided? Or do I think that I have enough guidance? Some people, they live their lives like this. I have enough guidance. Why would I need more guidance? Do you know a person who thinks like this has taken himself out of the fold of Islam and has to make tawbah and return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fix his thinking? What do you mean you have enough guidance? Umar radiallahu anhu, you know what he said? You know, we all know Umar radiallahu anhu. I don't think any Muslim in here doesn't know who Umar is. Do you know what he said? I said that he said, I will feel safe only when both feet are in Jannah. This is Umar. Who of us can compare ourselves to Umar? Both feet. And this is one of the Al-Ashar al and Washirin al Jannah. He is one of the ten people who were given the glad tidings that they will go into Jannah by the Prophet. And yet he was uncomfortable. And us, we are pretending like this day of judgment is never going to come. Oh, we're okay, no problem. Tomorrow I will make tawbah. Tomorrow you will make tawbah? Again, brother, where's the contract? I want to see this contract. Where did you get this? How is it that the great men, the great prophets, and those who followed them did not think like that, and yet we are thinking like this? I have enough guidance. Are you doing Allah a favor when you do your salah? Or is it Allah's favor unto you? Some people say, I'm doing my salah, brother. Don't bother me anymore. I don't want to hear it. I'm doing my salah. I don't need to do any more than my salah. Or whatever it is. When I say salah, maybe some of you don't know. In other languages, it's namaz. And in English, it's prayer. They say, I'm doing enough. How can we do enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can we? Never. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, subhanallah, uh, in, in, in the same hadith that I mentioned, which is a hadith Qudsi. Ya ibadi innakum lan tablughu durri fatadurruni wa lan tablughu naf'i fatanfa'uni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if any of you, Ya Ibadi, my slaves, if any of you tries to harm me, you will never reach. Your harm will never reach me. And if you try to benefit me, your benefit will never reach me. Never. You cannot benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never. You cannot take away anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you do, whatever I do, is for myself, for my success. But it's not going to happen if our whole life is concentrated on just on enjoyment. I want a better house, I want a better job. Nobody's thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what they got. Nobody. Are we thanking Allah enough? I know I'm not. Are we thanking Him enough? Maybe we will never be able to thank Him enough. But the point is, we're always looking for something more, and it's related to the dunya. It's related to the feeling good thing. It's hardly ever related to the akhirah, to the hereafter. Isn't this what we're here for? To go back home? To go back home. Our destination, we came from Jannah, where Adam came, and we want to go back there. That's our destination. We came from there, we want to go back there. This is a temporary test. That's all it is. Walk in through one door and walk through the other. That's it. What have you done? What have I done? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. 
Because really without Allah's making it easy for us, we will not be able to achieve it. But we have to do, we have to, as they say in America, you have to talk the talk and walk the walk. If you don't do that, it's not going to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put certain rules in this universe. And one of them is that He created us to worship Him. Are we fulfilling this purpose? Do we want to be successful really in the hereafter? And to some extent even in this world because living the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sanctioned for us is a life of mercy that helps us avoid many, many traps. Many traps. Many evil things that can happen to us. So, inshallah now, I just want to go over a little bit some of the issues or some of the ways that we can, how do I say, some of, some of the things that the life of the Muslim, the life of the Muslim should be a reflection of certain other ayat in the Quran that is complementary to just what, what I just talked about now. And I want you to please, please, Pay attention very carefully because some of us maybe recite these ayat on a regular basis, but we really are not paying attention fully to these ayat. Whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا And as for the one who fears the standing before his Lord, meaning the meeting before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and restrains himself. Here we go again, this doesn't feel good. Usually the human being, when he wants to do something that feels good, he doesn't want anything to get in the way of, of feeling good. So restraining yourself takes effort, it takes discipline. It takes effort, it does not necessarily feel good. Our tendency is to want to do something that feels good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who involves himself in this self-discipline, self-purification. Why? Because the goal is clear. Man Because he is afraid, or she is afraid of meeting his or her Lord on the day of judgment. So because of this fear, then they change their lifestyle and they purify themselves. They keep themselves away from things that are haram. They engage much in the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to the best that they can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah as much as you possibly can. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said before, is not in the business of cheating people. Allah is not telling you SubhanAllah, Allah is not telling you, I created them to worship me, and then I don't give you time to worship me. There's an ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah also that most Muslims misinterpret. It says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا Allah does not burden a soul with more than it can bear. This is related to the ibadah. Not that I'm doing haram, and then I'll say, La Allah does not, I involve myself in haram up to here. Huh? And then you go around and you say, La Allah How is this? This is not, the ayah is not related to that. This is not an excuse to go and do haram. This is not an excuse to go and do what Allah has forbidden. Or what, the, uh, what has been made makruh, maybe to some degree. We don't do that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in the business of cheating people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the time. It's up to you. Do you want it? And Allah, by the way, puts barakah, puts blessing in the things that you do for His sake. The things that you do for His sake, Allah puts blessings in it, which means maybe Allah wants good for you, and therefore He will make that thing easy for you to achieve. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet قال يا رسول الله أخبرني بعمل يدخلني الجنة ويبعدني عن النار فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقد سألت عن عظيم لقد سألت عن عظيم 
وانه ليسير على من يسره الله عليه الله اكبر الله سبحانه وتعالى in this hadith Mu'ad asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said give me some news about something that will keep me away from hellfire and go into Jannah the answer of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was you have asked about something very great enormous very important he said وَإِنَّهُ يَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ تعالى it is easy for the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for. But how do we do that? We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We beg Him to guide us. We beg Him to stay away from things that are haram. We beg Him in the middle of the night if we have to, to ask Him to please cleanse our souls, to please keep us away from what He dislikes, from what He hates. Are we doing that? Do we want Jannah that bad or not? If you look at the condition of the Muslims today, the indication is not one that is encouraging, unfortunately. May Allah have mercy on us. In, a, in the same surah, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْمَى SubhanAllah. As for the one who rebels, تَغَى don't give me this news. I don't want to hear it. I want to do what I want to do. I want to please myself. Don't ask me to do this and do that. He says, Meaning, this verse means that you and me might be engaged in spoiling our nafs. Huh? All the worldly desires, we are looking in the wrong direction. We see something we like, we're not supposed to look at, and we're sitting there with a smile and enjoying it. Be on the path of good, and not be on the path of evil. The door of evil opens another door of evil, and so on and so forth. The same with uh, good. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are striving, really striving, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to cheat you and say, ah, sucker. You're a sucker. Do anybody understand the American expression, sucker? You know what a sucker is, right? Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in the business of calling you a sucker. Inna wa'ad Allah haq. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is haq, true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in the business of cheating people. He is the Lord of the universe. He is the creator. He is there is no he has no beginning. He has no end. He is the master of everything. He gives and he takes away. He gives life and he takes and he gives death. Do you know who you are dealing with when you say Allah Akbar and you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you know who you are dealing with? In another ayah. Just the same reminder, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا The one who disciplines his nafs, who purifies it, who engages in much worship, who has a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a minute-by-minute minute basis even. Who knows? Huh? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا And destroy is the one who suffocates it. How does a man suffocate his own nafs? By adhering to its requests for pleasure. I'm not saying that there are not things that are halal and you can engage in pleasure. Maybe, you know, we engaged in some pleasure earlier. The brothers, as we said, got us some wonderful food and it's halal food and we're happy. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. But what is this food for? You enjoyed it, you ate it, you liked the way it tasted. It was halal for you because you adhered to the requirements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that food. So it actually is an ibadah for you because of your intention. Maybe you went a step further and you said, you know, I really want my body to be strong and so that I can worship Allah more. If I am hungry, maybe my worship is not going to be that good. SubhanAllah, our whole life can be a worship and we are missing out on that 
by concentrating on the American dream, as they say. Right? You know about the American dream? Everybody's quiet. They don't know. Where you been living, brothers? It is America. We don't have a dog. We are, you don't have jobs? We don't have a dog. You don't have a dog? Oh, you gotta have a dog too. White fence? Yeah, pick and white. Pick and white. Must be. Yes. The dogs. No, not like that. So, this is not for us. What are we trying to do? Is, is, what I'm trying to say is that if you, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, honors you with some halal rizq, that doesn't mean you say, no, no, I don't want it. I want to lead uh, a life of, uh, uh, I want to be a hermit. I want to just pray all night and all day. No, no, we have no concept like that in, uh, in Islam. Because there are even times when we're not allowed to pray. That's all that about us. There is no prayer after us. There are times when we're not even allowed to pray. So there are limits even in terms of the worships. Huh? SubhanAllah. So, <clears throat> inshallah, I want to stop here because I guess I could go on and on. But I want to leave, inshallah, with a few words to remember these last words that I, that I mentioned about disciplining the self and creating a lifestyle creating a lifestyle for ourselves that is a lifestyle of worship a lifestyle meaning your thoughts speech and action are leading you towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that inshallah you will have the success here in this world we will have the success here in this world and the hereafter I mean so we say as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says huh? فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى وَالْعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ As for the one who rebels and spoils his soul, he suffocates it, he doesn't give it, he doesn't give it what the, the purpose, he doesn't fulfill the purpose for what it was created, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather engages in all sorts of things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the name of saying, I live in America now, or I am from this, and I don't need to. All sorts of excuses that we give ourselves for not doing what we are supposed to do. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us on the path of good relief to Jannah. Amen. Amen.